right, John McCall. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Oregon. And the Constitution of the State of Oregon. Like many of the hallmarks of McCall's tenure in office, environmental concern did not begin with Tom McCall. Livability, that was Mark Hatfield's word. The Willamette Greenway and the effort to save the beaches, those were Bob Straub's ideas. The Bottle Bill and Oregon's Pioneer Land Use Planning Bill, those began with legislators. But it was Tom McCall who loaned those ideas, the force of his personality, his considerable verbal skills, and not least of all, his wit. Some highway engineers have a mentality, engineeringly speaking, that would run an eight-lane freeway through the Taj Mahal. That is our problem. A few weeks ago, I said the overriding challenge, the umbrella issue of the campaign and of the decade in Oregon is quality, quality of life in Oregon. I respectfully suggest to you that the proposals this administration has submitted to you today will meet that challenge and will further dramatize the significance of that issue. Of all the quotable things uttered by Tom McCall, none was quoted more than the statement he made to a national JCS convention in Portland in 1971. That was the most profound statement I ever made, or ever will make, uh, that uh, visit uh, all you want to, but please don't move here to live for heaven's sake don't move here to live because that was the first time a government official at that level of uh, visibility and authority ever dared even say tongue-in-cheek such a thing because it was uh, conflicting with the image of hospitality a governor is supposed to have and uh, western hospitality is equated with god and motherhood but it started a lot of people thinking about growth it used to be unquestioned by Americans that growth meant progress and was good for us all. Now the ecology campaign has brought this old axiom into question. The issue is being debated most intensely in one of the beauty spots of the West Coast, Terry Drinkwater reports. Despite what the sign says, you're really not all that welcome in Oregon, especially if you plan to stay. I think that uh, we may have to establish a policy. It's not going to be a policy of rudeness or having columnists insult people or having governors insult people, but uh, some kind of policy that uh, says at a certain point that this state has had enough. And uh, with the interstate commerce clause and the Constitution, we can't keep people out. But on the other hand, what we're activated by in this sphere, if we had a head-in-head -head contest with the state of California to see who could get the most people in a five-year period, and we won that contest, we'd be a disaster area. This may sound corny, but this activist loves Oregon more than life. He can't have both very long, but the trade-off, the trade-off with me is perfectly okay. But if the legacy we have helped give Oregon, and which made it twinkle afar, well, if it goes, I guess I wouldn't, wouldn't want to live in Oregon anyhow. In one of his last public appearances, McCall traveled to the Oregon-California border to help a tear remove the We Hope You Enjoy Your Visit portion of the Welcome to Oregon sign. The event was supposed to signal the death knell of McCall's Visit But Don't Stay philosophy. It was to be McCall's final capitulation to a state that now courts the attentions of out-of-state businesses. But McCall refused to follow the script. As he had demonstrated time and again during his eight years as governor, he was unwilling to surrender an idea he believed in and the state he loved. I'm simply saying that Oregon is demure and lovely, and it ought to play a little hard to get. And I think you'll all be just as sick as I am if we find it is nothing but a hungry hussy throwing herself at every stinking smokestack that's offered. It's not selfishly that I take these causes up, because I always did. It's not a panacea. It's not a counter irritant to my pain with cancer. It, it just, I just feel that I don't have the time to stick around and give everybody hell for doing the wrong thing. I've got to do all I can right now, you see.